friends. Welcome back to my living room. I'm back after, I think, about a month away, right? I'm not sure. I did 30 concerts in a row, and then I needed a big break. Hey, Ripsy. Nice to see you. Hey, Phil. So I'm back, back in my living room, facing the other direction. Whoa, I almost just fell off my piano bench. I have a new piano that I got from somebody on Nextdoor for $50, and it, I needed to get to know it a little bit. I have a microphone too, as you can see. Um, so I, hopefully new and improved live stream concerts at home. Um, yes, I got this piano. I, I had a Clavinova, which was my Yamaha Clavinova, which was a digital upright. That was my college graduation present, 1999, from Berkeley. I like to name drop Berkeley so people think I'm a legit musician. <laughs> um, and it had a broken foot from a from a bad move or bad movers and also from a klutzy move on my part and it had like a, a bad music stand and a bad foot but it worked just fine but I always had this dream of having a beautiful baby grand, a digital one. I'm big into digital instruments because you don't have to have tuners and I don't like having tuners come every month as is often the case with like acoustic pianos that I could afford. So I have this new Samic, it's new to me, Samic Digital Baby Grand. And it's so beautiful. It looks like a piece of furniture in our house and we, we all love the way it looks. And it took me a little getting used to because the feel, I had been playing that piano for 20 years. Oh my God, I can't believe that was 20 years ago. But I was playing that same piano for 20 years and um, just the weight of the keys and everything, the action is all a little bit different. The angle of where the music sits is really different and I'm just trying to get used to all of that. So I, I am back. Um, those of you who watched my 30 days in a row of concerts at home know that I was just doing a lot of random music, kind of going back and forth between show tunes and folk rock kind of stuff and blues and rock and pop. Well. I had gotten a lot of requests that I kind of um, like smiled and nodded about, but I'm ready to address now, which was some people were saying we, they would love to see me do my original album, which came out in 2010. I, I don't know if that's even right. About 10 years ago. And um, I, I debuted it live at this concert at the bitter end and it was fun and fabulous and then I never did them again. And um, I listened to the CD, I the CD, the music is available. You can go to iTunes and search Carrie Eris and you'll find it. I just said Carrie again. See, if you listen to my old concerts, you'll hear my like weird acknowledgement of the fact that I often say Carrie, but my name is pronounced Carrie, so I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> um, Anyway, if you type in Carrieras, you'll find Blurt, which was my CD originals. You'll also find some other stuff that came before that, like little demo things. Anyway, um, I worked for quite a while as like a recording, I would do recording sessions from other artists, voiceover work and singing work, harmony work. That was kind of what I did for a career and I just never did more with my originals, which it's a little sad. But I did play three of them in my one woman show that I did a couple of years ago, which I'll just hint at this now. Um, Gabriel has been diligently working on getting the video of that show available. So very soon it was, it's going to be on my YouTube page, the full length. It was a two hour one woman musical, um, with some originals and a lot of covers and a lot of banter, a lot of banter. Um, and Gabriel's been working really hard to get that released, and so I thought it would be very appropriate to do Blurt, maybe in, in its entirety, if not, it's in, if not the full album, I'm at least gonna do quite a few of the songs from Blurt, because Blurt is really the, pre blah, blah, blah. Blurt is really the prequel, the prequel, it's a hard word to say, to Better Late Than Never, which was the name of my show. So if you haven't seen that show yet, and many of you have not. If you haven't seen it yet, my album Blur is kind of the story before the story that I tell in that show. So I figured I would at least do some of the songs, if not all of them tonight. I'll see how I feel as I go along. But I wanted to at least introduce you to my lovely new piano. And I am now using a mic setup. 
Um, I'm waiting to hear from Damon if he signs on because Damon was like, come on, you people are like audio people. You could have a better setup than just an iPhone. Well, he's right. But at the same time, I really like how this is just very bare bones, very casual. Um, you know, we're not using a mixing board or anything fancy. I just want to like, I, you know, it's really great what we see, what we see posted from Zoom, like band things. But just so you know, those aren't exactly real. <laughs> like a lot of those are things that have been pre-recorded, mixed professionally. Zoom, I mean, you know, if you've had a Zoom call, it never works that crystal clear where you're even just talking with a couple of other people. There's delays, there's freezes, all kinds of weird things happen with timing. So don't, don't believe that what you see is like that easy for just like random, random lady at home. <laughs> what did you just write? Two performances on. Oh, well, Gabriel's just telling you a little bit about the logistics. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Rang the rang. Are you doing the I'm just doing, um, I'm just doing it from my phone and then I have a mic going into an amp. Hi, honey. I see you back there. Glenn, I mean, I, I feel for all you people because many of you are either professional musicians or audio people, sound design people, all of that. And I like, I'm sorry that the quality is not great, but you get what you get. Um, it's not a concert. It's you hanging out on my couch in the living room. That's how we have to look at it. Anyway, um, Hi, Mom. Hi, Naomi. So I was just telling the people that, um, well, welcome back and welcome back to me. It's been, a, it's been, I think, about a month since I did my last concert and it was a much needed break. Um, but I learned what I kind of already know. These are really good for me to keep me accountable. And, and it's been um, interesting without having something every day to like do. So I'm not doing them every day again. I'm going to do tonight and then see how I feel. Maybe I'll do once a week. I'm not exactly sure yet. But um, the kids are watching the movie very happily. It's a rainy afternoon. And I'm going to get started after I have some water. How are you all doing? It's now like day 4,619. Okay. Um, I actually, I was going get to get the album to show you. Um, but you could Google it, although my website's down at the moment, but I think you could probably Google Carrie Yaris Blurt, and you should find it. Um, in fact, I think I am going to grab one because I'm curious about, I don't think these are in the right order. But I'm going to start with Canary Tears. So some of these, and I, I, print, I have some other like really old songs to look at too that I thought would be fun if I get through all of Blurt, um, but also originals. So I'm just going to stick with the originals for tonight because I really haven't given them much time. And because I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to get to know my new piano here. And um, I think it's like best to know each other with my own material. So, so it's going to be all originals tonight. And I thank you for joining me. This first one is called Canary Tears. And I mean, if you have the album, great, sing along. If you don't have the album, look it up online maybe and um, feel free to purchase it or not.
So these songs were written, um, most of them were written about 10 years ago when this album came out. Um, some of them go back even a little bit older than that. I have a whole stack of things that I printed out that were from like even longer, like maybe more like 15 years ago or even 20. So we'll see how deep into the archives we get tonight, but I am sticking with originals tonight and maybe for the next few nights, we'll see. Um, thank you guys for joining me. It's been a long time and it's good to be back in my living room. No, it's good to be back in my living room with people um, sharing music with me and sharing some honest, real feelings and the good stuff and the bad stuff. It's all, it's all good. It's all life. I hope you're all doing okay. So the next one, these are not in the same order as on the album. If you actually listen, you know, when you listen to, it's like, this is one of the things that I think is really sad with digital music, that we used to make CDs as artists and listen to CDs from start to finish. And I'm sure there are some out there that, that, that doesn't really matter, but I, for one, I for one, it very intentionally selected the order of songs on my CD and it tells a story. My, my CD very often has been referred to as like, oh, this is a musical that hasn't been staged yet. And yes, it probably is. And one day it will be staged. Um, but until then, it's just an album. And it's meant to be listened to in order so that you hear the story. And I actually have the music completely out of order tonight. So do me a favor and like go on, I don't know if I'm on Spotify. I know I'm on iTunes and Maybe somebody could let me know if I'm on Spotify. Um, I think I'm on Amazon and iTunes and CD Baby. But if you could listen in order, that would be great. And then you would hear the actual story. And then once you've listened to that whole story, then you can watch the movie, the video that will soon be posted of uh, Better Late Than Never, which was my one woman show that continues the story. So it begins with the CD that I made and then goes on to a stage musical. And I imagine the next part at some point will be some kind of a staged musical of originals, but I'm just not there yet. And, you know, one would think that like two months of being stuck at home quarantined would be the perfect opportunity, but I'm having a really hard time. I mean, I, well, I have two children, so that's, I mean, that's my real main excuse. I'm very rarely alone where I can work on creative, creative stuff. So right now, having these concerts and the opportunity to sing is, is very good for me because it gives me that little creative outlet and doing like sitting down to paint with my kids is pretty much what I'm getting. So I'll take what I can get for now. But someday this might be, these might both be the like preambles to the, the real musical, who knows. Anyway, this next one is, ah, this next one doesn't go like that. This next one is called Home. And, um, I could tell you a little about it or I could just sing it. I always think it's probably better to just sing it. I talk a lot. <laughs> And I know you'll want to help me 
says blurt is on spotify great blurt is on spotify so you can go and listen to the album in its entirety from start to finish and really hear the whole story of blurt um i'm gonna keep on moving through it but i'm not going in order tonight i'm just kind of i've got it just i don't even know what the order is in this little book but i printed them out and here i go so this one is still standing these are, it's kind of funny to like sit down and just play these on piano and have no instrumentation, no backup vocals because my, the album itself is quite heavy on all of those things. And um, they haven't sounded this way to me since like before I was even in the studio working on the album. Let's count how many times I say CD and album tonight. <laughs> A lot, a lot. I mean, I honestly never even really shamelessly plugged the, the disc. What other words can I come up with? Except for, you know, right when it came out and I did my release concert and then it kind of like went to sleep for a long time. So this is a very belated, shameless plug edition of Concerts at Home, starring Carrie and all of Carrie's music. Um, so this is still standing. <clears throat> so far I'm still
was still standing. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Technically concert at home number 31, but also kind of concert at home like number one part two, because this is the part two of the originals series. And um, I don't know, I'll at least be doing originals tonight. We'll see if maybe I'll do them tomorrow night or next week or another time, but I am kind of working through some of my material from Blurt, my album that I released in, I think, 2010. Um, and kind of like the last time that I really thought about this music. <laughs> oh, well, except for those three, those three songs that I revisited a couple of years ago. But um, it's, it's funny because these songs were written in such a different place and time for me. I mean, literally and figuratively. And it's funny to do them again and, and kind of as I'm reading through the lyrics in front of me, remember how I felt writing them and feeling them at that point, but also finding like completely new meaning for so many of these. Um, I mean, my life couldn't have been more different then. I was a single, I was a single full-time artist and voice teacher in New York and, and now I am a wife and a mother and quarantined for the last two months or so. Um, some of these songs take on like a whole new meaning in this situation, it's really interesting. This is Sunday. Today's Monday, but we'll pretend it's Sunday. I did actually play through this one on a Sunday the other day. Was it yesterday or last week? Now I don't even remember, but <laughs> that's the way the blur goes. This is Sunday.
go into talk radio. This song, uh, I love this song. I miss, I, when I sit down to play the song with the piano, I miss the cello on it. If you listen to the original recorded version, there's such an amazing cello part on it, and it kind of makes the song, I think. But that's okay. We'll just make do. I think it's also maybe one verse too long. <laughs> maybe I need to cut a verse. I guess I won't, because it's, well, it is what it is. to sing with a mic. It was always on my right, and it feels really weird on my left. That's okay. I'll leave it there anyway. All right, here we go.
she go? Where did that bell go? When did it become news and talk radio? Where did the music go? When the record stopped spinning? When the fights were beginning? Where did she go? Radio. Thank you all for joining me. Um, back, back live stream concert at home series number 31, or maybe part two, concert one, not sure yet. If you've missed any of the prior 30 concerts though, please go visit my YouTube page, which is written there for you in the little description, or you can just go to it. It's youtube.com slash carry note, C-A-R-E-Y-N-O-T-E, and catch any of my last concerts there. Um, song titles are written out to most of them if you click open the comments, or the description rather, at YouTube. And if, there are, if you watch any concerts that don't yet have the titles written out, if as you're watching you would jot them down for me, I would really appreciate it. I still have maybe, I think, seven to go. Um, I'm playing through originals tonight. These are from my album called Blurt, which came out about ten years ago. You can listen on Spotify, iTunes, CD Baby. Um, once I relaunch my website, you'll be able to listen on there. And it is basically the story before the story of my one woman show called Better Late Than Never, which is very soon going to be published to YouTube as well. So I thought it would be a good idea to give you kind of this story that came first. If you listen to the album in order, it really does tell a story about kind of my life. It's sort of a coming of age story in a way. Um, it was really my life at the time, and finishing, finishing college after going through. One second, yeah, Tori. What's up? Do you want to say a hello? I want some apples. Well, we're gonna have dinner really soon, so I don't think we're gonna have snack right now. But Daddy gave me cream. Well, that was so nice of Daddy. Daddy was really nice to do that. Do you want to say hi, people at home? Hi. Do you want to sing them a song? Mm-hmm. What song? Well, twinkle star. Watch your head. You know, I don't want you to bang your head on the microphone. You can do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, sure. sure. Wait, sing into the mic. Here. Here. because I had to write on some music before. If you're just joining me, hi. Welcome back to you and to me. Thank you for joining me in my virtual living room. I'm playing through some of my originals tonight and I appreciate you joining me for it. This next one is called Spring. This is another one that, I mean, I wrote this song over 10 years ago, but it seems like in a way very appropriate for now, for today. Um, I could rename this like life in quarantine, I think. But in, I mean, if if you want to know a little of the actual history of this song, this song is really about seasonal affective disorder, which when you live in New York City, you probably know all about. Now I live in Florida, and it's really strange because the only time I really have a problem with it is in the summer, because in the summer it's too hot to be outside all the time, and I don't get enough sunlight. Go figure, right? Anyway, um, I wrote this actually for a friend of mine who was kind of dealing with it at the time, but I could very much relate. Um, the whole, like, I mean, those of you who are introverts or even sometimes introverts would totally get this, that like a lot of times we make plans with the best of intentions and then instead of making plans, we make excuses and we make like, 
you know, I'm not feeling well, I have a headache, I have to stay home, my kid's not feeling well, my guy, I don't know, all different kinds of things come up when depression creeps in. So um, that's kind of what this is about and that it's all okay, it's okay. And so here's me like virtually just sitting with you on the couch if you're feeling that way and you don't have to tell me any of it but I'll be there with you. And that we all hopefully have someone like that. If you don't have somebody like that, I will be that person for you. So please do text me if you need me to be that person. And um, if you have a person like that, then actually lean on them because yeah, it's harder without, it's harder without support. There's no question about it. <clears throat> This is called Spring. What do you think of my new piano, guys? Doesn't it sound great? How is this mic set up? For those of you who watched the concerts before, how, like, where, <clears throat> before I was going straight just into the iPhone with nothing, does this sound better, worse, the same? Do you have a crisper vocal? Or is it like not better and I should just go back to how I did it before? And how's the piano level? I have lots of like things I can do. It's digital, so it comes with like all these fun toys. <laughs> but I can change the level of the piano really easily and I feel like the mic situation is probably better than it was before, but please let me know if I'm wrong about that. <laughs> Thank you to my mom's friend, Judy. <laughs>
Let's see who's joining me. <clears throat> oh, Bill, that's so nice. Thank you. Well, I mean, I know you you knew about you were very well aware of the sound issues before, so I'm 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 gonna take your vote seriously that it does sound better. I'll listen back and see what I think. I mean, I can't imagine that, that it's gonna be worse. <laughs> um, thank you for joining. And hi, Cynthia, and, oh, I just knocked my water over. <clears throat> I guess you could probably still hear me without the mic, huh? Hi, Bonnie and Maria. Hey, Carlo, Ryan. And I said hi to Glenn already. Hi, Annie. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Ernie and Phil. This is my romper room, my romper room moment. Oh, I'm making the camera wobble. Okay. So I have, let's see, how are we doing? Oh, we're an hour already. Wow, that was fast. I mean, I can save the rest. I still have a bunch more original music, and it's kind of fun to just do that. It's like a little change of pace. But I think just from the album, let's see, there's... Three more on the CD that I haven't gotten to yet. I think I'll do one more of them tonight. Oh, did you hear that thunder? It sounds like somebody's moving furniture upstairs, except that we only have a one floor house. <laughs> this is One Step Away. And uh, so this is also on the CD, Blurt. And it's also in the One Woman Show, Better Late Than Never. It's gonna be coming out on YouTube very soon. so scary you fell the phone fell okay hold on we're still going let me just get this phone attached again <laughs> that was terrible okay let's try that again <clears throat> do I start over I guess I start over because it's the last song of the night so I should <laughs> so excited about it. 50 bucks. $50. And so I decided to pay it forward and sell my piano for 50 bucks because it's not the money to me. It's an instrument. So I sold it, or I'm selling it, I should say, to my children's dance studio. <clears throat> my dear friend Jackie, who is most likely going to start offering voice lessons there at her studio by yours truly. So it's funny because it kind of all comes back around. I'll still be playing that piano. <clears throat> Once things start up again and open up and normalize, then I will be teaching um, both at my home again and hopefully also at Reflex. Dance hearts, we'll see and I'll keep you posted. <clears throat> so here we go, this is the last, the last one of the night, One Step Away. This song, I, this is, this song always makes me think of my grandma my beloved Super Jima, who passed away a few years ago um, at the age of 101, three, 101, I think. I have to check again. Whatever it was, it was amazing. She was like the light of my life. And um, when, I, when she heard this song, she thought it must be about like meeting the love of my life, not my grandma, but the actual love of my life. And it wasn't, but it was so sweet that she thought it was. It was actually about meeting um, Alex Lacamoire, who is the musical director for Hamilton and In the Heights and um, Greatest Showman and a million other things. And that's this was actually about when I met him. I wrote this on the train, on the subway going back to my apartment after meeting him. 101. Mom just clarified. Grandma, Super Grandma was 101 years old when she passed. And she was an amazing woman, and it was just so cute, because she was like, oh, like she was so hopeful when she heard the song. Does that mean what I think it means? 
And at the time, it didn't yet, but very soon after it, I, had, I met Gabriel very soon after that. Hold on, I'm gonna have a sip of water. <clears throat> Anyway, this song was about meeting him and auditioning for him and having, I had a few callbacks for him. And feeling like, um, oh, and he, he also went to Berkeley. You finished a couple of years before I did. So we didn't cross paths there, but we share the alma mater. And when I met him, I kind of gushed to him about how we were both from Berkeley and blah, blah, blah. And just going home, and I was thinking about how it's so amazing that just one person, it could just be one person who like says yes and your whole life changes. That's such a cool concept to me. Um, I mean, I have a million people in my life like that, who I'm like, if I hadn't met that one person, or if they didn't make that one phone call for me, or if they didn't, I don't know, um, they didn't mention my name to someone. Like, just things that have happened, whether it's career-related or not, doesn't matter at all, but just it takes that one, that one degree of separation to like completely change your path, and I think that's just a fascinating thing. So anyway, that's what this is about. It's called One Step Away. <clears throat> and I can tell it's been over an hour because my voice is telling me so. It's like voices saying intermission time. And there's a child coming out, but we'll see if I can get through it. Thank you for joining me tonight. I will post this 
on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash carry note. I'll get to blurt mom. I, you know, I like tried to play it today <laughs> and I also didn't do, um, what else didn't I do? I didn't do Marie Tree. That's a great, a great one too. I, blurt is really hard to play and sing at the same time. And I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with all you people. <laughs> I hate that song. <laughs> that song, like when I wrote it, I really love the instrumentation, but now I read the lyrics and I'm, I'm embarrassed. There's some stuff in there that I'm like, it's just mean and I'm not like that and I really wasn't ever like that. I think I just, I just wrote it and like I was trying to get a point across, but some of the verses, I cringe when I read them now. I guess as long as I say that ahead of time, I don't mind doing it as much, but I need practice on it because it's hard to play and sing. And the chords, I need to write the chords out because they're not written out, but it's like, Something like that. I'll play a little bit of it. How's that? I say I hope it lasts when I should bite my tongue. I say we both know what we're fishing for. I think it's too late to take back what I said before I thought. Can't blame you if you choose to slam the door. I like to play with fire, maybe it's to feel the burn. I need put my foot right into my mouth. Whoops. Tell the truth and worry about a burn. But if it's not real, then I can do without. There's no holding back. See, I don't know this part. There's no holding back. <laughs> That's not it either. Oh. There's no holding back. and then I'll come back and work on it. Thank you guys all for watching tonight. I really appreciate having an audience to play for. And um, I, I will see you back soon. I don't know when, but when I know when, I'll let you know. Thanks and very, very thank you. Very thank you. <laughs> Bye.